what up my peeps, how's it going? Today we're going to be looking at the Weaver builds that there are um, and uh, some of the gameplay as well. So here we go, let's start with the current default build. Here we go. And uh, it recommends starting with Earth, Water and Weaver while equipping the, the sword and the dagger in the offhand. So in terms of specializations, they recommend Earth, Water and Weaver in the Earth they're, they come default with the serrated stones, uh, which is damage increase and duration increase of bleeding. And on top of that, you get the rock solid, which gives you some stability uh, when it shoots to earth. And finally, they recommend the diamond skin, which removes conditions when you're struck while your health is above the, st the threshold of 75% health. So, on top of that, in water, they recommend the Soothing Ice, which gain regeneration and frost aura when critically hit, and the cle Cleansing Wave, which removes conditions from nearby allies when attuning to water, and then finally the Cleansing Water, which cleans conditions from allies you grant regeneration to. So, on top of that, the Weaver, the new uh, Elite Specialization, they recommend default to start off with the Master's Fortitude, Lesser Stone Resonance, and Invigorating Strikes, which are the three tanky stats that you can get from this new specialization. So, the Master's Fortitude gain increased vitality when wielding the sword, gain bonus vitality based on a portion of your power and condition damage. Then you get the Lesser Stone Resonance, which is a stance which and when you enter under the state, Gaining barrier periodically over time, over the course of the stance, which is, I think, five periodical shields, uh, or five pulses of shields uh, during five seconds. And then finally you get invigorating strikes, which gain bigger when using a dual attack. Dodge rolling grants a barrier, so when you dodge, you get barrier, and when you use a dual attack, you get that bigger for three seconds, which uh, gives you 50% endurance regeneration. So this is the build they recommend by default with the equipment, as I said, the sword with the first hand and the off hand with the dagger. And they recommend the Sigil of Doom uh, on the sword, which means your next attack after you swapped this weapon while in combat inflicts poison for 5 seconds. And your Sigil of Exposure on the off hand, so your next attack after you swapped this weapon while in combat inflicts 5 stacks of vulnerability for 5 seconds. On top of this, they recommend the Rune of the Undead, which gives you a bunch of condition damage and a bunch of toughness. And then the final stat there is 7% of toughness is converted to condition damage. So basically a rune that's really based off of making you tanky and making your condition, uh, conditions deal more damage. Then the amulet they, rec they recommend is uh, the Viper Amulet, which gives you some power, precision, consistency. Yeah condition damage and some expertise. So this is the standard build I recommend um, that comes by default when you create a Weaver character and the demo. So this is clearly a sort of short ranged um, healer with uh, a bunch of tanky stats so that you don't die as quickly. Which kind of makes sense. Similar to the build of Aramancer there. So in terms of the default build here, um, we have Earth, Water and Weaver, and for that the usual rotation is engaging with number 2 of Fire, so Fire, Earth, on. You can then, once you're close by, you can use the dual ability to uh, spam the lava bursts, as well as gaining a barrier when you're in there already, as well as some vigor, which will um, be nice with stuns, knockdowns and stuns that you have on earth, as well as the burning damage you got from fire here. On top of that you can then swap to earth fire to have the opposite abilities. You got the burrow and you got the cripple and bleeding effects from the auto attack, as well as some extra burning effects there um, to get, get your enemies with a lot of condition damage there. So swapping to water and earth after that is really nice because you got your healing ability which will probably be handy by that time if you're not low already um, 
and you still got the knockdown and you got the healing abilities on your auto attack. Then swapping to some air will be nice if you're needing some extra shield abilities with a dual attack, which is a nice ranged ability. And on top of that, you have all the gap closures that require um, that require a target to hit. On top of that, you got chilled effect from Frost Aura, as well as some extra healing from the five ability of water. On top of that, you can swap to just air or swap to air fire so that you're back to the old rotation so you can use another escape or engage as well as you have another escape there and some extra damage by this time your second jump of fire should be ready again and you should also have some nice damage out of the auto attack there fire going back then to earth and fire and finishing off again with fire earth so these are some nice rotations there uh, if you guys have any any suggestions or ideas uh, obviously the meta changes this is just the, the demo so far uh, so drop down in the comments below what you think are the, some nice builds and stuff like that because uh, I'm always curious to see as well as I'll be happy to try them out uh, on another video so another another build I saw floating about is the arcane fire weaver or fire arcane weaver uh, and basically the way it goes it's 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 not a very tanky build at all it's the opposite it's a very condition based uh, build the way i've built it is by doing the sigil of smoldering so increase inflicted in burning duration by 25 percent that'll make all your burning uh, conditions last 25% longer, which is really nice, and then mix that with the Sigil of Savagery, so the give plus 30% duration stuns, and the plus 3% damage against But I think that will be really nice in some of the um, abilities of air, uh, but obviously you can swap that off with something that you might find a bit nicer. You could swap that with like more of a tanky more of a tanky one, or one to give you a bit more might, for example. Uh, whatever you feel like will be best, like removing your condition is also a nice one to, to go for, because it'll just make you a bit tankier. And, but yeah, play around and see what, what fits best, basically. In any case, I've chosen the Sigil of Smoldering, the Sigil of Savagery, and then here I used the Rune of Balthazar, which gives me plus 25 condition damage. Uh, plus 10% burning duration, plus 50 condition damage, plus 15% burning duration. When you're struck below 20% health, you gain quickness for 5 seconds, and then plus 100 condition damage, and plus 20% burning duration. When you use a heal skill nearby foes that are burned for 3 seconds, or wait. When you use a heal skill, nearby foes are burned for 3 seconds. So, that's will add to your burning basically and to your condition damage and then use the viper of uh, the, the viper amulet for some of that uh, uh, power and condition damage uh, as well as some precision expertise there uh, that seems to be a, quite a common pick amongst uh, the weavers but uh, I have also seen recommended with the Valkyrie amulet which gives you power uh, vitality Ferocity um, over the Mender Amulet. Uh, I think the Mender Amulet is more for the uh, healing uh, build. If you're going for more of a healer build, that's a good shout there. Um, but if you're going for the sword pick there, I would recommend probably the Viper Amulet there because that will give you some of that really nice condition damage. So your auto attack will be inflicted damage, uh, burning damage, as well as. Uh, Basically, a lot of your attacks will be giving a lot of copy and damage, so definitely play a bit off of that. Uh, around here in the specializations, the way it goes is in Arcane, you have the Arcane Precision, which will add more conditions. You have the Element of Contingency, which gives you some boons, and then it's a bit of a choice, personal choice. You can go for the Evasive Arcana, so whenever you use you get, a, you get a flame burst, uh, a cleansing, cleansing wave, a blinding flash or shockwave that is applied to the area 
around you but uh, I have gone here for the bountiful power which gives me damage increase from 2% um, for each uh, boom that is applied on me and I think that's a really nice one if you're in the middle of a team fight for example and if you have a, a team that is applying a lot of wounds then that's definitely going to be a nice shout and it's going to play off a bit of the wounds cut off of the elemental contingency here as well as then the fury that is gained from Preston's Flame Seal that I got picked up here. And in the case of fire, the way it goes is burning precision here for that extra burning. You get uh, power overwhelming here for that uh, damage uh, based. Uh, you get a boost of 10% based off of your power. And basically, 10% of your power will be turned into, will be added onto your damage there, so that's a really nice one for a common build, and on top of that you get the lava front uh, font, as I said before, which makes you get some of that fury, which will give you 20% critical strike, as well as give you some increased damage there, and that will play off beautifully from each other. Then finally in the weaver, you go for the full damage um, build here, so you get the, the increased so superior elements, you get uh, Weaver's Prowess, which will apply 10% condition damage um, and 20% condition duration, and on top of that you get the Elements of Rage, which is 10% damage and uh, again ferocity based on percentage of your power. So these will be very, very condition based uh, strategies here or specs. So, in order to play this, be very careful because you're going to be quite, uh, quite squishy. Now, in terms of abilities and the way to do it, I have seen uh, people speak about the fire. So, in order to engage, you usually use the fire number two there. Uh, if you're already close, you can just spam number one there. And if they get a bit far away, you can engage them. Two. Spam number three so that you, when you're close to them after engaging, you can do your dual ability there that will make you uh, tougher, as well as pulls some burning damage on top of that. If you swap to water after that, you can get the dual attack and uh, you can get some shield and burning effect again on them. Swapping again to then air, you have another gap closure there as well as some healing in case you're running a bit low or a bit of a chilled effect there uh, in case you want to slow them down. You also get to throw your air and uh, water knife to slow them down in case you're needing to catch them up. Uh, if not, you can stay around the air and fire because that will apply uh, some nice damage there as well as have some nice gap closures there that you can use to engage or disengage if, you, if you're in need of that. But uh, what I've seen the most common here is fire, earth, earth, fire is really what people are loving here because you are really tanky and apply a lot of burning abilities and uh, yeah, it's a very heavy condition build there which is a bit of a different one because uh, the elemental list is usually a bit uh, bigger range even with a dagger dagger build you're always a bit further out now with the armancer build the the, the, the attack and the attacking was very short range so that was a bit of a different one uh, but all those auras here are still being applied so around you you're still bursting out it's still mostly a team fighting characters, so you want to have a similar uh, team fighting presence, however, you want to be focusing more on killing people, so be very careful because this is a very, very squishy build, uh, it might be a bit more useful in uh, PvE, it might uh, be very good if you have a nice healer in your team as well, so just keep a nice, uh, just keep that in mind. Thank you very much for watching, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and share with your friends if you enjoyed the video 
comment down below your thoughts, including your thoughts on uh, different builds and how many different ways you can build Weaver, and uh, your thoughts on these builds as well, and if you try them out, uh, how to play them in some of those uh, rotations, ability rotations you maybe figured out that are really effective as well. I'd like to know that. And uh, yeah, until next time, thank you very much for watching, and see you then.